I'm gonna go over the basics of a one by system. Uh, it's gonna include front chain ring, rear derailleur. That's pretty much the brunt of it. We'll go from there. So a typical one by chain ring is gonna have a narrow tooth. We're gonna have a wide tooth and then just keep continue to alternate. That fat or wide tooth is gonna fit into the wider section of your chain. The narrow tooth is gonna fit into the narrow section of your chain. And by having the fat or wide tooth here, it's gonna just grab the chain a little bit better, but also release it. And I think that's what the narrow tooth is gonna be doing. So uh, if we had all wide teeth here, we probably obviously wouldn't work, but uh, because we're wider here, we're filling in that space a little better and allowing the chain to be a little more stable and stay tight on this chain ring. So if we don't have this, we would have some issues. So Woof Tooth is the maker of this chain ring. They call their one by chain ring a drop stop. So it's basically stopping the chain from dropping off of this chain during rough or uh, technical terrain. The other portion or component for a one by system is your rear derailleur. Not only are we running a long cage, possibly wider or a bigger uh, diameter pulley wheels to accommodate our larger cassette over here, but the derailleur itself has uh, what they call a clutch. Um, they may call it clutch and SRAM as well. This is a Shimano. So it's gonna basically allow this arm to stay nice and tensioned, very tight here. So if I turn this clutch off, it's gonna function like a regular derailleur would on a non one by system. So I can push this very easy, get a little bit of chain slap there. As soon as I turn this on or flipping the switch up, this gets much harder to push. Actually, at this point, I gotta push very much to get it to go on and move forward. So with the clutch turned off or on a regular non one by rear derailleur, so every time you hit a bump, things want to drop down. The lower cage wants to move forward. The weight of the chain wants to drop down. So what this is, this is doing is happening is pushing forward. Let's turn that off. This is pushing forward every time you hit a bump. And you got chain slop right there, which could allow the chain to jump off your front chain ring or even jump a gear in the back. So with this extra clutch system, which is providing pressure this way, um, not eliminating it completely, but certainly allowing it not to sag so much. So since we're running a one by, there's there's no more small ring, there's no middle ring, there's no large ring. We just have one ring right here. So no need for a front derailleur. So the derailleur would usually attach right here on the seat tube. So missing derailleur. And what the derailleur would do is it had the cage, which would hold the chain, um, hold it in place, maybe keep it from jumping around. So now we don't have that anymore. Uh, so to take place of guiding that chain either we're getting an exterior chain guide and installing it or uh, what we're doing is getting this chain ring here with the wide narrow wide teeth it's just going to help grab the chain hold on to it a little better in conjunction with that uh, clutch in the rear derailleur that's pretty much those two working together the fact that we have bigger cassette to compensate for missing large or small chain rings here um, completely different but um, in essence, they all complement each other. So now that we got rid of uh, two chain rings or one chain rings, depending where you have a triple or a triple or a double, then we have to get our climbing gears back. So we had to go ahead and increase our climbing gears on this cassette. So we jumped from, gosh, before we were running a two by 10, uh, 10 gears, this is actually 11. Um, now they currently have 12, but uh, we continue to grow from anywhere from 42 to 46, 48. Uh, now this is a, this one, since it's an 11 speed, I believe I'm still running a 48. The 50 you're gonna find on the SRAM Eagle. Uh, Shimano just came out with the 51 tooth. Going larger gears here is gonna allow us to still tack the same steepness of hills without any issues. And uh, I can contest to that just from trying to set sky out and have not having the issues. Not really skipping a beat as far as climbing is concerned. Uh, the smaller gear down here, um, it could be anywhere from a, a 10 or a nine. Um, so you might notice something like this that uh, you might lose your spinning gear. So if you're on the flats or a slight descent and you really still want to power and go as fast as you can, you might find that uh, a 10 tooth gear is not enough or a nine tooth may not be enough. So then you would have to go and increase the size of your front chain ring. So in whole, 
or on the hole. So I'm actually running a, I went from a 30 tooth to a 32, I believe. So I went to a 32 tooth, uh, kept the same cassette. I am running an 11 speed. I believe it's a, a 10 or 11 tooth. I'd have to double check. I know that this one, the largest tooth climbing gear is a 48. What I did find out that I was on the flats when I really wanted to keep a high speed or a high cadence, I would find my clothes very close to the end here, almost getting to my last gear. And at times to keep up with the other guys, I would have to drop down to my smallest gear here. And I was spinning a lot quicker than the next guy who was running a larger front chain ring. So uh, what I did was I went ahead and upgraded my front chain ring from a 32 to a 32. I uh, was able to slow down the cadence which allowed me to have more power. So if I really needed to speed up, I would speed up, increase my cadence, but I also increased my speed, allowing me to keep up another speed or than, than the guy next to me. So I found that that helped me. So you could really use that front chaining to dial in everything for your style of riding, whether you wanna increase your, your flat speed or your downhill uh, decline speed. I will upgrade this to a, I do eventually wanna get the Shimano uh, new 12 speed which uh, gains one more tooth than SRAM. Uh, SRAM and Shimano, those guys are fighting just like, a, or it's a rivalry, a friendly rivalry, just like a Ford and Chevrolet. With the SRAM rear derailleur, we do have an on-off switch, so I can flip that switch. It'll turn off the clutch, which will allow me to move this very easily. And the purpose is to, when I need to remove this rear wheel, I'm not fighting this rear derailleur to get that rear wheel out of there. SRAM has a push button that actually allows the whole derailleur to just kind of go limp, which is nice too. So I wish they can combine the two features, but I doubt it. Uh, the other cool thing about um, going one by is you do not have to get a special chain. You can still use the regular chain. There's not a one by chain specific or one by 10, one by 11 or one by 12. We're using the same chain that uh, you would use for a regular bike that is not a one by system. So again, it's all determined how many gears you have back here. If you have an 11 speed, 10 speed, 12 speed, just get the appropriate chain, 11 speed chain for an 11 speed uh, cassette, and then so on. The one thing you want to be aware of though, when you are uh, ready to install your new chain, we're measuring uh, gear to gear, actually big gear to big gear. Uh, you do not have to run through the rear derailleur. You can just have it run a straight line and meet somewhere right here in the middle. So you're pulling chain nice and tight, and then you're meeting, and then you're adding two extra links. Uh, whereas the non one by systems, you're adding just one extra link. And just to define that one link would consider one narrow link and one wide link. So it's actually one, two links put together, which creates one link. So in this case for the one by systems, we're adding two extra links, giving it a little extra slack. Uh, so it doesn't have any issues climbing up to these bigger gears because we're making such a big jump that um, we need a little bit of space there to allow that chain to climb up to the next gear. So it might need a little extra pull on the, on the derailleur there, pulling that extra chain. And then once it's on, the spring will pull back and engage the chain once the chain is engaged on your last gear here. So we always want this nice and tight or taut. Um, if you have a little bit of slack here or droop, then a lot of that can be controlled with your B-screw on your rear derailleur. This goes for Shimano or SRAM. So for Shimano, our B-screw is located right up here. And um, actually, the that fooled me. So we have our, this top one is gonna be our high limit screw. I can see the back of the screw, it's not touching anything. Chains up here closer to number, number one and two gear. So this is gonna be my high speed screw since we're touching no metal. This one down here, we are touching some metal, that's gonna be my low speed screw. And we have the one in the middle, that's my B screw, which is touching a piece of metal, which is then touching my derailleur hanger. So by screwing in that B screw, it's gonna pull back the derailleur that direction, uh, creating some tightness in the chain. Also allowing the upper pulley wheel to get away from that bigger chain ring when going up to the top so there's no rub. So there are two areas that the B screw will come into effect uh, when we're in our easiest climbing gear, that last one there, or first one I should say, it's first gear, boom. So as we tighten that B-screw, it's gonna allow the upper pulley wheel to back up and get away from the teeth. So if you hear excessive rubbing, it's the upper pulley wheel pushing the chain into that first gear. So we tighten the B-screw, it's gonna allow it to back up. 
just enough so we don't have that rub anymore. And then the other spot the B-screw comes into play, especially for this one by system, is down at your last gear. Whether it's a 10, 11, or 12 speed, tighten this B-screw and it will take any sag out of this chain. Right now this chain's nice and tight, but if we had some sag, some droopiness like that, uh, one of two things, either we have too many links and the chain's too long, or we just need to tighten up our B-screw, which will snug up this chain line, make it nice and straight again.